I like I know people have done so for a while. I uh, I know people who have very different very different setups. Like some people use Live Two D. Some people are like messing with like open source tools like Inochi Two D. How I, I guess. Where do we even start with a, a VTubing setup start? on Linux? Like, where did you get the idea that doing so was even a thing you could do? Right, because uh, f for context, I switched to Linux long before I even thought about streaming. So hmm. by the time I got the, the idea in my head, hey, I could do some streaming, uh, I already had to figure out how I was going to do it from Linux to begin with. Right, so right, right. it wasn't like I was on Windows and then had to figure out how to transition into Linux and my whole setup. No, I, I'd started from the beginning and I knew, hey, OBS, it's open source. Of course, it's going to be Linux native if I want it to. Not a problem. <laughs> and then came the other, mm -hmm. other concerns. Um, to be fair, I did spend a year before I got my live 2D models, a year uh, I did all my streaming with PNG tubers. Mm -hmm. uh, began with PNG tuber plus uh, alongside Vieto Tube Mini, mm -hmm. and then I switched in exclusively to Vieto Tube Mini because PNG tuber plus was no longer supported and kind of breaking mm -hmm. with every update. So yeah, so most of where I began was with uh, Vieto Tube Mini that was being also. Given a lot of uh, Linux love, how do you it had spell a that? Linux Sorry, version. Uh, oh, let me put that into the chat. Yes. Tube, and I'll, I'll even side. put it into your. Yeah, Vieto Tube Mini, uh, which now there's a big Vieto Tube Live version coming. And to be fair, like the the version in in pre-release now of the the full featured like software for PNG tubers mm -hmm. is gonna support PNG Tuber Plus models. So like, if you want to have a png tuber and really step it up mm -hmm. like that's one of like the best ways to go mm -hmm. and especially if you want something on linux well there's basically a a ready to go linux binary i wish it were a flat pack but yeah it's just a linux binary and if you're on arch it should just work as long as you have your dependencies in, you know installed mm -hmm. so yeah uh early on it was a lot less of a headache because it was just the the png tubers mm -hmm. i did a little bit of animation with um oh god animate animate yeah like i had my my png tuber uh avatar cut up for some you know minimal animation right right you know just some just some loops uh just so he could move around mm -hmm. and nova was her static png self and we had little more than moving mouths and blinkings and that was it mm -hmm. uh so that was easy enough to do but yeah I spent weeks, if not, you know, if not months, researching my options for Live 2D because mm -hmm. I knew it was gonna be a while. Yeah. Uh, I don't, and I think it was like, oh god, between start and end with all the hiccups in between, it was probably like eight or eight months between the starting of the the Live 2D project and actually going live with the the models. Mm -hmm. I just heard so. him there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. You those are coming through. Yes, yes, those are coming um, through. So, anyways, so yeah. Uh, on that note, I I looked into the options. Even in Ochi Two D, which mm -hmm. is like the open source one, that was a that was a possibility. But I figured, unless I wanted to learn to rig myself, I was probably yeah. not going to find too many people who could use it. I know there's. Um, like one mm -hmm. or two JP riggers that exist. Like the developer. Um, they have a model, and there's someone in Japan who knows how to do it, but I th there's, like, very oh. few people. Yeah. yeah Plus, so it's, I it's an evolving tool, to... so documentation is a bit kind of funky as totally. well. Yeah, and of course, like, 3D was would have been an option, too. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, I think uh, Rogue Ren will will attest to 3D being a little easier to, to manage mm -hmm. on Linux, particularly. Um, but personally, I like the look of Live 2D. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a charm to the 2D aesthetic. And it's hilarious when people say, oh, my God, your avatar is 3D now. And the, the thing is, he's really not. He just looks 3D. Mm -hmm. He's as flat as a pancake, but he looks 3D. Um, there's definitely a charm to that. And so I wanted to make sure I could do it. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know what? Everyone that I know doing uh, VTubing is using VTube Studio. Most of the people, except for like a handful, would like go in default to VTube Studio. So if I had any concerns, questions, I would have like 
a dozen people I could reach out to who could say, oh yeah, here's how you do that thing on VTube Studio. Mm -hmm. And be like, cool. And everyone in like the in the asset for or the art asset world so from creating the avatar to rigging they're familiar with the tool they know what it can do mm -hmm. and if you ask like oh hey could we do is this would this be possible and they'll be like oh yeah sure you can do it like that mm -hmm. and that's uh, a lot of it you know with my rigger working hand in hand to say hey this is a very very odd situation of what I'm going to ask you to do. We've got two avatars and I have to figure out how to make this work. <laughs> and thankfully, you know, this being a, a common tool, yeah, I was able to get a lot more insights just that way. Mm -hmm. I, I assume you probably are aware of other people that are... Obviously, Noctopus, yes. But is there anyone else who's doing... Mm -hmm. Whether it be, you know, you said there's not really anyone doing the specific thing you're doing, but, like, the idea of having two distinct mm. models at the same time. Yeah, I can tell you about that. Mm. So, the way Noctopus does is his, and mm. this is my intuition based on how I see it, mm. uh, he does the smart thing <laughs> where the, the little octopus is just attached to the main model, so they're hmm. actually one model, and in fact, you will you can see how like they they blink in uh, in they blink completely synchronized, so it's mm -hmm. it's all the same model. So that you do only have to manage one model at a time, right? And that that makes it easy. There are other ways you can technically make a second instance of VTube Studio. Do not recommend on <laughs> Linux, but I suppose if this was Windows, it would be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and Vital. Like, his little, like, turtle is barely animated at all, but mm -hmm. yeah, so, uh, he's doing multiple, uh, you know, multiple models. Hey, Ahmed. He's, um, so we got, um, you know, we've got Vito doing the multiple models, especially during things like, uh, when Evil and Nero yeah, are, yeah, yeah. like, duetting and so on. Like, yeah, uh, that's gonna be a thing. He obviously drives them differently using, like, the, the, the WebSocket APIs and all that, so... So yeah, fine for him. Mm -hmm. But I rarely see anyone just trying to manage two models at the same time, especially ones where uh, they kind of are not attached to each other. Mm. So I, early on, I was run running two different instances of Vieto Tube Mini. So, um, so that was just, yeah, I just needed one for each of us. Mm -hmm. and that meant two windows, two different captures, and that also gave me the flexibility to arrange them on the screen in different ways. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was a that was a thing that uh, I I realized early on. Okay, this is gonna be extra challenging, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna make it work somehow. I can go through some of like my dead ends and you know going to hear that and the other, but ultimately I ended up with VTube Studio. We did get an old used iPhone for tracking. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why I don't use the other the other options. But ultimately, most of that just works. And with the tools that I have today, mm -hmm. I have just about all I need. There's a couple of limitations mm -hmm. that I work around when I can. But it's not so bad that I think it really impacts, like, you know, it, I don't think it impacts the show in any way that's all that, uh, all that detrimental. Mm -hmm. Minor side tangent, uh, with especially early on with how many windows you said you had floating around, how many monitors do you work with or do you manage it with virtual <laughs> desktops? Like, how do you keep track of everything? <laughs> okay, okay. For, for when I'm actually streaming, mm. for when I'm actually streaming, I did get a third monitor, by the way. Uh -huh. I did uh -huh. get a third, so it's three. I have my, my main monitor in front of me for, like, where the game goes. I have a vertical monitor to the side where I keep uh, I keep browser and my Firebot dashboard. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the third one's literally just to keep an eye on OBS and be able to look at, uh, you know, see see all of the, the audio level, see the, what I'm actually displaying and sending. Mm -hmm. So all of that. Uh, I, I was using just two originally, and I was splitting my vertical monitor into three sections. I feel like having the tiny third monitor is uh is just such a relief so yes i i have three and it's so that i can have just these four things in view at any time mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that's enough for for me but obviously i have way more like active windows you know for actual streaming right and do you, i guess you just put those on virtual desktops or do you put them behind the windows 
They're just behind. I I never got into virtual desktops. I know some people love and swear by them, and that's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm fine with that. I just have lots of um, how would I say? I have lots of task bars uh -huh. that, uh, on each like e each monitor has its own task bar, so I I can look at a glance and say, oh yeah, that window's on that screen, and that one's on that screen. And when you have enough monitors, I think you don't need in that much uh, out of a virtual desktop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. A lot of the VTubing tools obviously are based around Windows, but there are definitely mm -hmm. pieces of your chain like OBS, which are Linux native, or mm -hmm. like other things which might just be web applications, in which case they'll work mm -hmm. on anything. But for right. those things which are Windows software, how did you go about working out how to get them to work? Yeah, okay. So the most, most of the time, like 99% of the time, Okay, maybe not that, but most of the time, Proton does the trick mm -hmm. uh, for all things that are, you know, that are games. Uh, VTube Studio just runs through Proton happily. Like, okay. I, rare, I rarely ever have to poke at it. Uh, and once in a while, like, maybe once in a while for certain games, I'll either use Lutris or see if Wine will pick it up naturally. And there we go. You know that that'll be the end of it. Heck, for um, you would you would appreciate Final Fantasy XIV. Mm -hmm. I have that uh, XIV launcher mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. keeps it running happily on Linux. So, but for the actual stream, yeah, I think it's really like for for every day, it's just Proton handling VTube Studio and whatever other game may or may not have a Linux binary. And the rest is kind of just there. Like, the rest is all kind of Linux native one way or the other. And and I'll get into, like, it, it feeds into why I stay on Arch Linux, or at least the Arch Linux ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, is one of the reasons. Just because I, I keep finding the tools I need in the AUR, mm -hmm. and I have little need to continue trying to force Windows software to run. Yeah, the AUR is a fantastic tool. I can... I can definitely attest to that. There are many, many pieces of software which you okay. Usually, if I'm looking for something, and there's no other packages, the dev mm -hmm. hasn't made a package. There's no flat pack. Nothing exists. I go to the yeah. AUR, and most <laughs> of the time, it's going to be there. Yeah. Sometimes not, but in those cases, it's mm -hmm. very rare. Yeah, I I get. OBS and all the like plugins I need for it from the AUR. I was surprised oh, okay. that yeah, I was surprised that like even even some basic stuff like browser source, which <laughs> apparently on Linux doesn't come baked in. You have to get it as an add-on, but no. lo and behold, someone on the AUR just says, "Hey, here's an OBS package that mm -hmm. already has that built in." And so I know it's probably better now maybe, but like I've got the I've, the the specific OBS package I've grabbed like came bundled with a bunch of other things, mm -hmm. and it's just ah, it's just beautiful. Like it just freaking works, and I don't even mind that it takes a little time to to like compile locally. Mm -hmm. It's fine. I feel I feel more in tune with my computer that way. 